Hey kids, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about on a gloriously sunny winter's day, as you can see, on another bike review today. Very excited, it's a bike that I've been wanting to ride for ages. It's the Honda CB1000R, their big bruising naked bike. They call it a Neo Calf Racer. Well, if you stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So the Honda CB1000R then. This is uh, Honda's uh, entry into the big bruising naked bike sector, if you like. A sort of sector that was dominated, or maybe even invented by the, I guess the Triumph Speed Triple. But these days has things in it like the uh, KTM Super Duke R, the Yamaha MT-10 SP, things like that. So it's uh, a very popular category with some very nice bikes in it. And it's taken me a while to get my hands on the CB1000R. But many people have been asking when I'm going to get to uh, ride on it. So. Uh, Today's the day, absolutely thrilled to be on another four-cylinder bike, it's uh, beautifully smooth. I'm always impressed when I jump on a four-cylinder. You have to start off with then, a little black on the uh, A34, I'm just in the environs of Abingdon near Oxford. And I just want to give the bike a quick try on this faster road, a bit of dual carriageway. And here I am, I'm doing slightly naughty speeds, but... Uh, the bike has got loads and loads of go as you'd expect. It's got a 993cc inline four cylinder engine, puts out uh, something like 140 plus brake horsepower. I'll go through the specs in detail when I do the walk around it as usual. It's the engine out of the old uh, 2006 Firebase, so of course it's fast. Let me just pull in again, get back to more normal speeds. In terms of wind protection, well, of course, you haven't got any, it's a naked bike. So I'm in the full blast, or the full wind blast here. It's not an issue though, I'm used to riding naked bikes, it's no problem at all. It's not turbulent air that's getting at me. Although it's quite a blustery old day, so I'm being uh, knocked around a little bit. There's not a great deal in terms of uh, protection from the bodywork. I'm riding today in my, uh, in my jeans and it's quite a cold day. Riding jeans, I should point out before anyone asks. <laughs> And I can feel quite a bit of wind buffet on my legs as well off the bike. So wind protection, bit rubbish, but then you kind of expect that on a naked bike. Let's nip through this little gap. One of the joys of motorcycling. Sadly, I'm still in the southeast of the UK, so I don't have the joys of motorcycling in terms of free roads. I've just got traffic again. Such a nuisance. But wow, this bike, yeah, she wants to go. Once you wind her up, you need to tuck down a little bit, otherwise you get blown off the back, but uh, yeah, very eager engine. Alrighty, now I've only been riding the bike literally 10 minutes, and uh, one of the things that's caught me out a couple of times already, and often does on Hondas actually, is this indicator button. For some reason on some Hondas, they swap around where the hooter, the horn, and the indicator button is. So they do, they've done that on my CRF, so you'd think I'll be used to it. But because I swap around riding so many bikes, I don't get used to it. And uh, when I first jumped on it, it took me a bit of doing to find where the indicator was. Not a big deal. If uh, this is your only bike, you'd of course get used to it and get in muscle memory. But if you ride different bikes, that is a bit of a nuisance. I don't know why Honda have done that. It's a really weird thing to do. It catches me out every time I ride one. All right, let's come off this bit of dual carriageway and find some more interesting roads. The brakes on here work absolutely beautifully. Let's nip over this way. It feels really light and agile. It's great for nipping through traffic like that. I'll tell you what, as a sporty commuter, this would be brilliant. Yeah, she's, uh, she's lovely on the corners much lighter feeling than you'd expect because it's not a particularly lightweight bike again i'll go through the specs when i do the walk around but it's something like 220 odd kilograms which sounds heavy doesn't it but uh, it just doesn't feel heavy at all not when you're riding it or indeed when you're lugging it around the engine is uh, actually relatively quiet on it it's got a nice note about it but uh, the noise on the bike is mostly kind of uh, overwhelmed by wind noise I guess so I think maybe an afternoon upmarket can if you like the sound of the engine the brakes are amazing on here particularly this front brake and it might just be because of course I mean, sir, it's a brand new bike but uh, yeah it works really really well that front brake 
Right, hopefully you can see a bit better now. I'm not riding into the sun. Well, I'm just going to have nothing much behind me. Let me just check that back brake. Actually, the back brake is very good as well, which is uh, unusual. Often back brakes on bikes are a bit rubbish, but this one is absolutely fine. So comfort then on the bike. Riding position is lovely. Of course, you're sat upright as you are on naked bikes, and I love that. And on this particular bike, your the handlebars feel quite nice and wide, so it's good for leverage and control. Uh, and your legs are quite tucked up in a fairly sporty position. My knees are quite at a cute angle. And it's probably my favourite riding position, actually, that. Because it feels sporty, yet you're not in that crouch like you'd be on a sports bike where it's uh, basically flipping uncomfortable. The seat on it, if I'm honest, is a little bit hard. It's quite wide padded, though, and you can move around a bit on it. So if, uh, I think this bike would cope quite well with different sized people. I'm only five foot eight, so medium sized fella. I think if you're a bit taller than me, you'd be fine as well as if you're a bit shorter. Love this little instrument uh, binnacle on here. It's got a really nice, I mean, it's obviously it's all LCD and I like the white on black. I just think it looks really good. It's a nice bit of design touch there. Right, let's pull over here and uh, let me walk you around the bike and talk you through the spec in the usual way. If I can find a spot where I'm not going to get in the way of anyone. Uh, let's have a look. Let's go down there in the sunshine. Good chance to test the turning circle, which is all right actually. I've uh, I've had bikes with better turning circles, but I've had a lot worse as well. So that's all right. And in fact, while I'm faffing about here, let's just turn her off. Stands nice and easy to get down. And uh, here she is. Nice looking little motorcycle. Well, not really little, but anyway, let me uh, let me move her out the road. Just want to see what she's like to lug around. So. Yeah, all right. Has to be said, you wouldn't have a problem with this if you're uh, not a particularly big person, and it's not a terrible, terribly heavy bike to move around. Would be fine in car parks and moving around on your garage, etc. All righty. Gosh, this sun is beautiful today. Excellent, and gives us a nice view of the bike as well. All righty. Let me get the uh, phone out, and I'll talk you through the specs in the usual way. Here we are then, the Honda CB1000R, fine looking motorcycle in the sunshine, something that Honda on the website describe as a Neo Sports CAF, uh, raw, radical and retro is what they say, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Alright, what about the spec then? So the engine, as I say, 998cc uh, inline 4, uh, here we go. Uh, lovely, sweet, smooth unit taken out of the 2006 Fireblade, although they've tinkered with it. It's got a slightly longer stroke than that bike. Uh, it puts out 143.5 bhp at 10,500 rpm. So you have to rev her quite a bit to get the power out of it, but a lovely, lovely engine. Torque-wise, 77 foot-pounds of torque. That's 104 newton meters in the old bunny, 8,250 rpm. Uh, let's come and have a look at some of the hardware. So the brakes here on the front. Uh, looks like it's got Takiko calipers. Here we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. Takiko calipers on there. Uh, four pots uh, and those discs, double discs, 310 millimeters on the front. On the rear, we've got a single disc as is usual. Uh, 256 uh, millimeter uh, disc on that one. Suspension on the front. We've got uh, shower forks on here. Uh, they're called. SFF BP USD forks according to the website. No idea what that means, but uh, <laughs> they feel all right. They look pretty meaty, has to be said. And they've got uh, adjustment on the top as well. Uh, and at the rear, uh, you've got shower balance free rear cushion, apparently, uh, suspension. And there's that massive, great red spring in there. Let's see if we can get a shot. There she is. Uh, I do like the red actually, but that's just me being a bit of a tart. Alrighty, what else? Seat height on here, uh, 825 millimetres, so medium height, but it feels very low. It's nice and uh, narrow at the front, so even a shorty like me at 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch inseam uh, can get my feet flat down on the deck, so it feels very planted. Weight of the bike, 212 kilograms, so not super light, um, middling I suppose I'd say, but it doesn't feel heavy as I said on the road. This beautiful tank here looks great in this sunshine. That whole 16.2 litres so you know about a standard size I guess on that. Electronics wise it's got all LED lighting. Let's have a look at the front light actually which I do like on this. There we go. Needs a bit of a clean but it's a nice light and uh, LED indicators etc. It's got ABS, traction control, riding modes, comes with rain standard, sport and a user controllable mode. 
Uh, and what else? Price on the road, 11,299 according to the website. So uh, yeah, not a bad value for this, this sort of bike. That compares well, I think, with the likes of the Speed Triple and the KTM Super Duke R. Uh, what else to tell you? It's got an assist and slipper clutch. Um, comes with, uh, well, you can get some extras. You can get uh, factory fitted heated grips, which would be a great thing to have as standard. You can get a rear hugger, fly screen, single seat cowl, radiator grills, things like that. So there are plenty of things that you can buy to make the bike your own. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, what else to say? Oh, this one has actually got the Akrapovic can on there, which does sound nice, but it's not particularly loud, as I mentioned. Anyway, there we go. So that's it for the spec. Let's uh, jump back on and ride us some more. Alrighty. Okay, none of that uh, keyless nonsense on the Honda. <laughs> right. Interesting flashing light on here. I don't know if you noticed when I started that off. It went sort of green, uh, green, amber, red. Not entirely sure what that was about, but uh, <laughs> I just noticed it. Maybe uh, somebody can put me right. Actually, just looking at this, I think I can uh, turn around here and save myself a nasty little bit of road. This is a spot that I often do walk around on when I come down this area. And there's a horrible right turn up here with some big potholes, so I'm going to avoid it by going around the back way here. Yeah, that's more like it. I suppose other uh, natural competitors for this, oh hang on a minute, does it look like it's got a barrier across the end of the road, perhaps my little plan is forward, oh no it's open, excellent. That's good, just avoids a few uh, nasty potholes I remember in this road, but it is as about a blind a corner as you can have. So the bike compared to its competitors, and I suppose the other bikes that you'd think of that compete with this would be things like the Kawasaki Z1000X, is it? And the, uh, the BMW naked, of course, the S1000R. Or is it the RR? I always get those confused. And this bike, compared to some of those others, I guess feels a li little bit more straightforward. A little bit less complex. It does have uh, riding modes, as I mentioned, but it's not absolutely bristling with electronics like some of those others are. And for some, that might be a good thing. In terms of getting at the various uh, control modes in here, you press the mode button on the left here, and there's a little bar that comes up on the uh, on the dash here. You see at the moment it's under there, look, under where the trip thing is. If I press the mode button, then it goes under there where that is, and then you get to the top, and there we go. And basically that's how you select what you want to change. Uh, and then you hit the uh, select button to actually change the modes and so on. So relatively straightforward to actually get to grips with how that all works. That suspension is set uh, quite firm actually. I quite like it because it means the handling is really nice. But on this bumpy old road with this bit of overbanding on, it does sort of uh, somewhat jar your fillings. But it nice, does make for nice handling. It's a little bit damp on the road today. I don't want to go nuts, but uh, yeah, she feels really light handling wise. It's beautiful. Uh oh. Road ahead closed. Oh, when they say that, it often makes me think, how closed is closed? Let's have a little, little look. Probably means I'm going to have to turn around, but hey-ho. Hello, this looks like it could be the end of the road for me. Oh, let's, let's crack on and see what happens. Sometimes you can get through on a bike. Wow, what a beautiful day. Well, I remember actually, I must just say thank you very much indeed to the guys at Blade Motorcycles in Abingdon for letting me borrow the bike. Fantastic showroom up there if you've not been. They've, uh, they're one of these multi-franchise dealers. They've got uh, Kawasaki, they've got uh, Ducati, they've got Honda of course, and next door there's an associated Harley-Davidson dealer, which I really must check out one day and get to ride that Harley. Maybe I'll do that in the summer. But yeah, they've got uh, loads of bikes in the store there loads of demos if you want to have a go then uh, it's very easy to get to it's just off the A34 so thanks to Alan and the guys come and say hello to them tell them I sent you you never know they might do you a cracking deal <laughs> well so far this road's not looking terribly closed On full lock just about get around in a road width
Actually, the uh, exhaust has a lovely howl about it. Once you open her up a little, let's just get past this man. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah, once you wind her up, you get to appreciate that all the power is in the upper rev band. It's a proper hooligan bike, this. It doesn't quite bring out the same sort of hooligan as the uh, Yamaha MC10 SP did, or indeed the KTM Super Duke R. But it's all there if you want it to be. Oh, and the brakes are cracking. It does feel lighter though than those other two bikes. Very nice, and the uh, I guess the other advantage this bike has over and above things like the MT10, the KTM, and indeed the BMW S1000R, or is it the RR, is that this looks like a motorbike. It doesn't look all um, alien. It doesn't look like uh, it's not been thought about. It's a lovely, lovely looking motorcycle. In my opinion, that of course is just a subjective thing. I also like the look of the uh, Triumph Speed Triple, of course, as well, that's in this sort of category. Yeah, as a Sunday scratcher, this would be great fun. Thank you. Don't go up there, it's closed. Pleased to see the bike does have a proper fuel gauge. Something so often missing on uh, new bikes. I do love this little instrument cluster, as I mentioned before. It's got everything there you need, including a gear position indicator as well as a fuel gauge. The mirror's on here. Work a treat. They're nice and solid, there's no vibration. Great view out of them. This is one of those bikes that if you only had one bike, then this is definitely worth considering because you could use this every day as a bike to get you to work. But you could also use it for fun on a Sunday or indeed go touring in the summer on it. Really nice machine. I'm just struggling to find anything bad about it. I'm uh, very conscious that people often say, I never say anything bad about bikes that I review because I'm obviously desperate that uh, dealers will let me borrow their bikes in future so I don't say anything. Well that's, <laughs> that's not the case. It's just that these days bikes are so good aren't they? And Hondas, well, they've always got a good quality about them, haven't they? They've got a reputation for bulletproof engines. I think you could do a lot worse than getting this bike, but uh, what can I think of that I don't like about it? Well, nothing really, other than maybe the fact that it could do with heated grips, but they're available as an option. I think the engine could be a little bit louder. Uh, this has got the Acra pipe on this, as I mentioned. It has got a nice note about it, but you can't really hear it very much, because once you wind her up to those upper rev ranges, really it's just wind blast that you get. And I guess wind blast could be an issue for you, but again, that's just the fact that it's a naked bike. You'll get that on any naked bike, so you can't really level that at the Honda. Oh, actually, I've just realised something I don't like about the bike as I came to this junction. That indicator switch. Why do Honda stick them where the horn should be every time I have to look at my left thumb? to see what that switch is. But that really is the only thing I don't like about the bike. So in summary then, the bike is uh, it feels light and agile when you're riding it. It's got loads of go. It's a great price. It's quite simple. It's not over complicated, which I quite like about it. The seat is a little bit hard. I don't like the indicator switch and it could have a bit more noise about the exhaust. But other than that, a really nice machine. Okay, so there we have it. That's my first impressions review of the Honda CB1000R. It's been great to finally ride it. Another bike to throw in the mix. Hope that's been of some interest to you. If this is the first time that you've been along to my channel, thank you very much indeed for watching until the end. I don't just do bike reviews, but I also do things like trips and tours. I do maintenance, things in the garage, how to look after your bike. Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I try and cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. And if you're not already done so, it'd be great to have you uh, hit the subscribe button, and be great to have you along in future videos. Okay, that's it for this time. Hope that's been of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.